The content presented is not meant to incite or support any form of harassment or hate. Please act responsibly and ensure that your actions are respectful towards all individuals mentioned. Also, do not take this as any form of financial advice. I am not a financial expert, nor am I really good at finances. Mascot horror has been a bit of a plague on the horror franchise for quite some time, as we've seen a rather large influx of the genre. And unfortunately, most of the new mascot horror games have been, well... Now to be frank, not all of these mascot horror games are bad. There are some good ones out there, depending on, I guess, what you view as good. You obviously had the Five Nights at Freddy's series that has been the face of the mascot horror scene for many years now at this point, alongside Bendy and the Ink Machine, another popular horror franchise that a lot of people love too. You also got Poppy Playtime, which at first had a rather shaky start to things, but it's actually gradually improved as more chapters are released. There was also Hello Neighbor, Granny, Andy's Apple Farm. Yeah, I think you get the point. Despite the influx of all these different games, there are some out there that do shine throughout all of it, and actually, I think, have a chance of being something. One of them was Indigo Park, which you've seen me cover before in a previous video I did on this channel, which I will be providing in the top right corner here, or just, I don't know, wherever the little info box is, so you can go watch it there yourself. If you're not aware, the Indica Park team decided to crowdfund their project due to the financial struggles experienced during the development of Chapter 1, organizing a Kickstarter with the goal of $50,000 to make the second chapter. And not only did they meet this goal, but they also exceeded it significantly, raising it nearly six times the amount with $292,722. Of course, Kickstarter does take a small cut of 5% from successful projects, and there's also a processing fee of about 3%. So if we do the math here, um, ba -ba -ba -ba, uh, you get about, okay, the team has got about uh, $269,304, which is a rather substantial amount of money even then, and I'm really impressed by how much financial support they've garnered. But with this support, there's also a lot of high expectations as well, because it's not every day you see a project like this get the support it's getting. And so the amount of pressure on the developers now is probably a lot because the game isn't solely funded by them anymore. It's now funded by other people's money. Yo. Now, speaking on the topic of the Kickstarter, they actually ended up having tiers for this fundraiser which I am going to look at just to show what's being provided here. Okay, so this is the official Indigo Park Chapter 2 uh, Kickstarter page that the team had set up. I mainly want to f focus on the rewards because obviously I brought up a section in the video where I wanted to go over the rewards of this uh, Kickstarter. You had the first one here which was the early bird digital copy of Chapter 2 where you would get a digital copy of Chapter 2 at the early bird pricing which if you you know, you pre-ordered this via giving the money, you would receive the game at a cheaper rate than the listed price on Steam upon its release. So you basically would get the release of Chapter 2, but at a much cheaper cost. Uh, digital copy of Chapter 2, copy of the digital release of Chapter 2, sent as a Steam key, which cost like 8 bucks. So maybe they'll price it at about 8 bucks. I'm not sure. Uh, you also have the physical like soundtrack release in a, in a CD bundle. That's 22 bucks. Okay, and then there's copies of this too, which has like, you know, a lot of different people. Because you had like 133 people pay for this one, and you had like 638 people pay for this one. So a lot of money. Uh, you also then had the chapter one digital art book bundle, which was 25 bucks. Uh, 768 people bought this. Uh, where you could get your digital copy of their art and development book for chapter one, which had concept art, early screenshots, and more, and they would deliver it as a PDF, which is cool. And also, each bundle does come with a digital copy of chapter two, which is pretty nice. The custom voice acted line bundle, which is 35 bucks, where you could request a voice acted line from a character of your choice, and you could pick from either Rambly, Molly, Finley, or Lloyd. The physical art book bundle, we can get a fit like a, a actual physical copy of the art book. You can also now get the signed poster bundle, which has four different posters 
all signed, which is $115. You could get all of the uh, signed posters for one reduced price, featuring signed posters from all four of the main voice actors from Chapter 1. Your name in the game. Now this one is interesting, because you can have your name pop up in Chapter 2. Uh, while the location of your name is yet to be determined, it will be featured in the game's environment as part of the park. Think a plaque or employee board. So basically your name would just pop up in game and you would have to pay about, um, that'd be like 300 bucks. You in the game, so you actually get to get put in the game. Uh, now is your chance to visit Indigo Park, where in chapter two you will be photoshopped. An actual photoshop of an image of, I think, you in real life. That is 750 bucks. And only five people bought it, so again, it was probably limited to five people. Which is good, obviously, but... Still, $750, man. That is wild. And then we get into more territory. The Ultimate Bundle. $1,200. You really like the Funny Raccoon game, don't you? Get one of everything listed, excluding exclusive tiers like the Design a Collectible Reward. So basically, this is the Ultimate Bundle where you could get everything that you saw here mentioned prior, but all in one bundle. So you pretty much... <laughs> Uh, you get everything. You get the Chapter 1 OST, digital art book, uh, the digital copy of Chapter 2, all the signed posters, a physical art book, a voice acted line, you in the game, and then your name in the game. And that was a good price of about uh, $1,200. So um, eight people bought that. Actually, no, there is a second one. Okay. 32 people bought this. Design a collectible, which was $2,500, $2,500 to design a collectible in the game. And one person bought this, thankfully. It looks like they've they've limited it to one person to buy it. Uh, work of the team to design your own custom co collectible for chapter two, where this item would be hidden in a chapter for the player to find and will feature a line from Rambly talking about the item. So basically, you would just have your own plushie in Indigo Park, and that was pretty much it. Now the Kickstarter money isn't the only financial support the Indigo Park team has received. They've also put out merch as well, despite stating that there wouldn't be any before releasing the game. I'm not planning any merch. Some big merch companies have reached out to me and asked if we wanted to do merch, and I did give them the okay to go ahead and start thinking about and developing it, but it's not something that I think me or anyone on the team right now should be looking at. I think when a game gets any form of attention, one of the first things people think about is making merch. It's a great way to fund the game, and I have no problem with people selling merch. But sometimes when you prioritize getting that merch out while you're still developing the game, a lot of your characters and situations get changed to be more marketable and you have a higher focus on getting merch out. And that's not something we want to do. The last thing I want you guys to think of is Indigo Park as a cash grab. This is a passion project. Later. That being said, we are working with a couple different companies to potentially handle some merchandise launches. Really, the future is just going to tell on that. We're very aware that you guys do want merchandise. Now, so far, the only merch I've seen come out is a makeshift plush and two YouTube plushies, all of which are selling for about 30 bucks on both platforms. Now, if you're familiar with how makeshift does things, you will know that they require a certain amount of copies sold for the product to be made. Otherwise, if they don't meet the goal, the buyers will get a refund and the plush idea is scrapped. Well, this plush quickly met its goal, uh, very quickly in fact, reaching a whopping 18,575 copies just before the deadline, which is, oh my god. Now doing some math here, the total amount from the plush sales comes to about $557,000. $36.25. Of course, um, makeshift does take some sort of cut, but it is, it's not really um, specified on the amount they end up taking, and I've tried to research it, but I, can, I could not really find much about it, so I'm just going to estimate that they take about, I don't know, maybe 65 to 70% 70, 70 of a cut of, of the revenue, which, again, I might be wrong. I don't think that's really even true. It could be inaccurate, so don't take this as fact. I'm just simply estimating a possible amount, but if we go off of that idea, it would leave the Indigo Park team with roughly about out $194,962.69, which even still, that is a lot of money. 
So when you combine that with the Kickstarter funds from earlier, the total was around $464,266.69, almost half a million dollars, which is crazy to think about after one chapter release of this series. And it may likely even exceed half a million dollars now with the sale of the YouTube splushies. Now, unfortunately on YouTube's, I am unable to really estimate how much they're going to be getting from to sell these plushies because obviously YouTube does not make that public information. So you really don't get a good estimation about how much they're getting from these YouTube plushies. Hey everybody, this is Futureberry. I'm coming at you live from today actually, when this video is meant to release because I've been made aware that there is an announcement video going to be premiering uh, about an hour and 15 minutes from now. And it's about the Indigo Park Chapter 1's update, uh, version 1.1, it's being announced, and alongside this, um, it seems like they're announcing an official merch shop. So, they have more merch, literally the day I'm releasing this video. But the merch includes a 6 inch tall vinyl figure of Rambly the Raccoon, which is 30 bucks. So... That's, um, that's, that's something. Uh, you also have more. Uh, you get four separate t-shirts that are all $24. want to do is be like, oh, look at this rambly plushie. Buy it before the game even comes out. Or you guys want t-shirts? Buy the t-shirts, you know? They also seem to be wanting to announce, uh, more plushies. I don't know what this is probably going to be, but they're probably going to announce another thing. It's coming soon. But, um, yep. They have an official merch shop now. And they're selling more merch. Fun stuff, I guess. I think it is great that the project is getting the funding and support it is, but it's also crucial to consider where this funding is coming from. And well, it's coming from the community. These are the fans and the people who want to see this game become what it promises to be. And when you rely on someone else's money to fund your project, it adds a layer of risk to it. Crowdfunding a project, especially a mascot horror game like this, is a risky gamble. And I'm honestly not sure what the outcome might be, because I don't know if I've ever really heard of any other mascot horror game having a Kickstarter before, besides FNAF. But if you know your history, uh, you know how that went. I am glad that the Indigo Park team is being open about their progress and talking about their ideas and even showing little gameplay updates they're incorporating into Chapter 1, which I hope they can continue to do, especially when it comes to development updates for Chapter 2, because I feel like transparency in this is pretty key when it comes to projects like this especially when they're crowdfunded by a community. There's also the question as to what exactly is going to be done with all the money, because quite frankly, I doubt a little over half a million dollars is going to solely go into one chapter of a game that originally aimed to have $50,000 raised for it. Where else is the money going to go in regards to the future chapters and other aspects of the game itself, let alone what is the plan for these next phases of the game? Will there be another crowdfunding Kickstarter again? which in my opinion is a bad idea and potential red flag if you host another one after getting all of this money. But I know that the developers are likely under a lot of pressure as well. If I personally got half a million dollars worth of crowdfunded money for a game project I had in mind, I'd be pretty beyond stressed out because not only do I have more than enough money to support the project I might have in mind, but I also need to make sure that I meet people's expectations for said game. So in every aspect, I want to say I give my support to the Indigo Park team through that process and hope for the best as they develop Chapter 2 and so on. The future of Indigo Park is pretty much up in the air and circumstance as it does all rest on their hands in the choices they make for it. With that being said, thank you guys for watching. I know this kind of content was a little bit different than what I usually put out there, but I wanted to try something a little different and try touching on a topic that I haven't really seen many people kind of go into, at least from what I'm aware of. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it nonetheless. Let me know if you like it in the comments below. But um, yep, that's really about it. Thank you guys for stopping by, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.